the welcome. Good morning. Isn't Pastor Courtney awesome? She's the best. We love Pastor Courtney. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, uh, we'd like to just invite you to take a moment. There's a number that's going to come up on the screen. Take a moment and text this number. We want to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, we are so glad that you've joined us for service this morning. We're not going to like spam your phone or anything crazy like that. We just want to get connected with you and answer any questions that you might have. So take a moment and text that number. But as you just heard, today we're going to continue in our series in the book of Joshua. Looking at one of my favorite stories, maybe you've heard it. Maybe you haven't. We're looking at the story of Sun Stand Still. And if you're taking notes this morning, because note takers are world changers, the title of the message is Audacious Faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, Audacious Faith. Audacious Faith. And what we'll see this morning is this is that Sun Stand Still faith is an audacious faith. And this type of faith is for all of us. Today we're talking about asking God. For the impossible. Because I don't believe that Jesus came from heaven to earth and saved us so that we could survive this world, but rather that we could change it for his glory. And it takes having this audacious faith. Too many times I see Christians who have settled into a place of complacency, settled into this place of just being okay with, with where we're at. And because we've come to this place of complacency, we now have low expectations for what God can do. But I believe today that if we would have audacious faith, like what we're going to see Joshua has, that we would see God do some big, amazing things in our lives. Today, at the end of the message, I'm going to give you a chance to respond just asking God for the impossible. Maybe there's a need in your life, in your family. Maybe it's just for our world in general. We're going to come to God, and we're going to have audacious faith like Joshua. Are you ready? Are you ready? Mask on service, you ready? Great. Turn in your Bible to John, or John, Joshua chapter 10. We're in a series in Joshua. Don't turn to John. It's not important today. Just Joshua. Joshua chapter 10. We're going to start in verse 7. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Notice that that's God speaking in past tense because our current problems, God already knows the outcome of them. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After an all night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up to Beth Haran and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda as they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Haran to Azekah. The Lord hurled large hailstones down on them from the sky, and more of them died from the hailstones than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. That's awesome. Is that awesome to you? Like, God just made it hail and all these people died. More than what died from the sword, which tells me that in a moment, God can do more than we can do in a lifetime of preparation. One moment. Verse 12. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O sun, stand still over Gibeon, O moon, over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Jashar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky, and the lay going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Let's pray. Jesus, God, I pray that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds. I pray that we would have this audacious faith like Joshua had, this faith that, that asks you for the impossible, and that we would see miracles happen before our eyes here this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. So I want to ask you this question this morning, and this question is really what this message is all about. What in your life do you need to see the sun stand still? What is that area? What is that thing that, that you need to see what seems like it's impossible? What do you need to see happen? I'm not going to speak for long this morning and before you celebrate because you get to go to lunch early or whatever. Here's why. Not because I didn't come prepared this morning but because I can only tell you and challenge you and encourage you 
to have this type of faith so many times, so many ways, before it just takes us going into action and doing it. So the end of the message today, once again, we're going to spend some time just praying and asking God for the impossible. But what is that area in your life that you need to see God do the impossible? Maybe it's a financial need. Maybe it's a physical healing. Maybe it's emotional. Maybe it's a a broken relationship. Maybe it's a child who has gone away and now you need them to come back. What is that need? And maybe you're sitting there thinking, man, sun stands still, Faith. That sounds cool, but I don't, I don't really feel like that's for me, but I want you to know that, that God wants us to have sun stand still faith, and he wants to do miracles like we just saw in your life every single day. Every day, God's got something for you. So what is that need? How, how have you been praying for it, or, or have you been praying for it? Maybe it's a need that's been around for a long time, and you've just gotten tired of praying for it. Maybe it just seems like, man, that is just too big for that to happen. That's just too big for God to to do something there. But let me encourage you this morning that if the size of your need seems too big for you, it's probably just right for God. If it's too big for us, it's, it's just right for him. He's not intimidated by our big needs. So if you're in a situation today where you'd say, man, I've tried everything, and the only way that this situation, the only way that this thing can change is if God does something, then you are right in God's sweet spot. And I believe we're gonna see that happen today. But before we jump in, I want to give you a little backstory on this chapter 10 of what we just read here, backstory on this Joshua. And what we see is that Joshua, he got himself in some trouble. He makes himself an alliance with an un, this unwise alliance with this group that he should have destroyed. And now he finds himself needing to defend this group from another group. So he's, he's, in this, he's in this situation where he got himself in a situation and now he needs God to get him out of it. Anybody here ever get yourself in a situation that you needed God to get you out of? Or is it just me? Is it just me that does that? This is the 930 service, so most of you guys probably don't have that struggle. But man, maybe you've gotten your spot, yourself in a spot where you did it and now you need God to get you out of. Maybe you got yourself in a lot of debt and now you're wanting to be generous, saying, God, I I need you to get me out of this. Maybe you jumped into that marriage and now you're asking God to bless your marriage. Maybe you weren't the parent that you needed to be and your kids have gone away from God and now you're saying, God, I, I need you to do something here. I think many times we get ourselves in a situation and we need God to get us out of it. And if that's where you're at today and you've, you find yourself like that, then you can relate to Joshua. And here's what I love, is we see that God can take our mistakes and turn it into a miracle. God wants to take our mistakes and turn it into a miracle. I'm so glad we serve a God who just like Joshua, where he went and got himself in this situation, God went in and he fought the battle. He, he helped him fight the battle. He, he brought him out of the battle in the midst of it. God can do that for us today. So we see Joshua... He's fighting to defend this group, this enemy that that he had no business fighting, this enemy that that outnumbered him. And what we see is that Joshua, they're starting to win. And and they're winning here in this battle. And what he realizes is that the sun is starting to go down. And if the sun goes down, they're going to escape. They're going to get away. And Joshua remembers this promise that God gave him in verse 8 that no one will be able to stand up against him. He remembers the promise that he is supposed to have all of the promised land. And in this moment of desperation, Joshua prays this prayer that I'm sure he's never prayed before. I'm sure he's never heard anyone pray before. And he gets up in front of a whole nation and prays, son, stand still. He prays that in front of people. If that's me, I'm saying that under my breath, right? Like, "Uh, son, stand still, God, right? And if it happens, like, I'm going to tell you about it and we're going to celebrate like, oh, God did a miracle. If it doesn't happen, that's cool. Like, it's just between me and God, right? But he puts it all on the line, and he gets up there in front of a whole nation. Son, stand still. Here's what I love about this miracle. And working with students, and, but I, I think this is a thing with adults, too. I hear this a lot of, well, I just don't really know how to pray. Or what if I say the wrong thing? Or maybe you're here, and, and you've you're struggling with that, or maybe you're just thinking like, well, I hear other people pray, and they, how they pray, it's so nice, and they pray so long, and, but my prayers are just so short. Well, one, I want you to realize Joshua's prayer is like 12 or 13 words long. Just, that's it. But here's, here's my favorite part. This is what has got me fired up all week. Joshua prays, son, stand still. Do you realize that he doesn't even say the prayer right? That's wrong. 
He says it wrong. We now know that the sun doesn't revolve around the earth, but the earth around the sun. Right? He, he says the prayer wrong, and guess what? God, he loves it. He loves it. He's like, man, Joshua knows that I can do anything. So, man, if you're here this morning and, and you're discouraged because I might not say the prayer right, look at what happened for Joshua. God's not insulted by our, our big prayer requests. He's not intimidated by them. He loves them. Here's, here's what else I've noticed about our prayer life. And, and like I said, this is the 930 service, so maybe it's just me, but like I pray dumb stuff sometimes. Anybody here ever pray dumb stuff? Like I know God knows my heart, and I know he wants to, to hear where I'm at, but I've noticed like sometimes I just pray things. And I just leave, like here's, here's an example. God be with me today, which is nice, right? But I think God's sitting up there going like, be with you today. That's all. Well, first of all, I, I wasn't aware that we weren't going to be together already today. I wasn't aware that, that I needed your permission to be with you. I, I created all of heaven and all of earth. I am everywhere all the time. Be with you today? Okay. Or maybe if you've gone to church for a while, you, you say something like this, like you, you pray and you kind of have this moment where you're praying boldly, and you're, you're in a moment like Joshua where like the outcome's going to be seen. You know those prayers where it's like, man, I'm praying for healing, I'm praying for this, and, and I'm going to be able to really see how this is answered. And we get kind of intimidated by it, and we end it with, but if it be, if it be your will, God. As if like God needs an out on on our prayers, right? Like, oh, good, I'm glad that you added that because I was worried that I was about to have to answer that prayer, but because you said that, like, all right, good, I, I'm glad to know I don't have to do it. Now, if we're trying to, to understand, understand this, like Jesus in the garden, not my will, but your will be done. We should always pray according to the word of God, always pray according to God's will. But I think sometimes we use that as an out of like, just in case this doesn't happen, I'm just gonna like throw this in there so I don't, so I don't look you know, dumb. I don't, I, don't, I don't look like, oh man, God didn't answer my prayer. But I want to challenge you this morning that we need to get to the point that, that no matter the thing, no matter how big, how seemingly impossible that thing might be, our first response is to go to God and pray and to pray boldly. To pray boldly. I don't think, I don't think God made the sun stand still for Joshua because Joshua went to him that morning and went, God be with me today. God, sun stand still, if it be thy will. Even though that would be sweet, because that's like a nice doctor. Like, that's a, that's a rhyme right there. You could rap on that. But he didn't leave it at that. He, he came before God boldly. Sun, stand still. He got bold enough to say, God, I know your promises. I know you promised that no one can stand against me. I know that you've promised me this. And according to your promises, I need you to do something big right now. And I'm praying boldly, saying, son, stand still. I want to challenge our church today. Would we pray bold prayers? Would we go beyond just, God, be with me today? And would we pray bold things? Would we know that we need to see these miracles happen and only God can do it? Put it all out there on the line. The greatest humility you can demonstrate is by putting yourself in a situation where if God doesn't show up in that situation, you might look stupid. You wanna, you wanna learn to be humble? Put yourself in a moment where if God doesn't show up, you put it all on the line and you might look a little crazy. But also, if God does show up, you have no credit to take in that because it was all God. Let's, let's get ourselves to a place of being humble, recognizing that only God can do it. I wonder this morning if you'd finally be bold enough to present that need. And maybe you haven't presented the need to God because you feel like Joshua, where you got yourself into it and now you need to get yourself out of it. But I want you to know God wants to take your mistake and turn it into a miracle. Would you be bold enough to ask him for that financial need, that physical need, that relational need? Only God can do it. And I know maybe some of you, you've come to church for a long time. You've seen a lot of things. You've, you've prayed a lot of things that maybe haven't happened yet. And you're discouraged and you're, you've heard messages like this. And, and I want you to know, I want you to be challenged this morning. What is it you want God to do in your life? What is that thing that seems impossible? 
Because I believe God's got a calling on every single person's life, young and old, longtime Christian, brand new Christian. God's got a calling on your life. And if the size of your calling isn't intimidating to you, guess what? It's probably insulting to God. What do I mean by that? God's calling you to do something. And it, whenever God calls us to something, it's going to be a little uncomfortable. Think about Jesus going from heaven to earth. That's uncomfortable. Think about Jesus getting up on the cross and dying for our sins. That's uncomfortable, but it was necessary. And God's got a call on your life. God's calling you to something, and if you're not intimidated by it, I wonder if it's not really what God's calling you to, because God's always going to call us to a place where we have to rely on him, where we have to turn to him every day and say, God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. It's going to require us to pray bold prayers. What's God calling you to this morning? What we see is that what we ask God for is a direct reflection of what we believe about him. How I go to God and what I ask him for is a direct reflection on what I believe about his capability, his capacity, his character. How do you view God? Because the moment that you view God in the way that he is loving, that he is all powerful everywhere, all the time, that's gonna change how you ask for things from him. What is that sun stand still prayer that you need to pray today? I believe that here right now, God's challenging you, God's working on your heart. Maybe faith is rising a little bit. Your belief is rising. You're, you're, you're being encouraged. And God's calling you to something new, and, and that's going to build up in you this morning. But what I wonder is, are there things in your life where maybe the sun is slipping down? Where at one point you felt called to do that thing and it hasn't happened yet. Where maybe at one point you, you wanted your family to, to be bold for Christ. You wanted your family to be on fire for Jesus. At one point you wanted to be this place, finance, whatever it is. And that moment, that thing that you felt like God was calling you to, you see the sun's going down. Time is, is passing. Would you be bold enough to pray, sun, stand still? Here's a practical thing I want to give you today. If you want to have that sun stand still faith, that audacious faith that Joshua had, it takes little things happening every day that are, that's going to build your faith. Little things that, that help build it. It's going to take praying prayers every day and seeing those come to pass. It's going to take little things that build into a big thing. It's going to take being in, in your Bible every day. And what you'll see is that every time you open up your Bible, it has potential to build your faith. It has potential to speak something to you. So here's what I want to give you this morning. I want to give you 10 different things, 10 audacious declarations. And these are just going to be quick things. If you're taking notes, uh, you might not be able to write fast enough so you can get your phone out and take pictures on the screen. But these are things that I want to give you that I believe are going to help get you to have an audacious faith. That as little things come up throughout your day, that you remember these. You, and you preach scripture. Man, the best message you should hear all week shouldn't be a message that you come here and listen to, but it should be a message that you're preaching to yourself straight out of scripture for that moment that you need it. Would we be a church that, that has faith that, that every time something comes up, man, I know what the word says and I'm gonna preach it to myself. Would we be a church that, that has faith that this impossible things come up and I know that these little things happen and God came through and I know he's gonna come through for these big things. So here are 10 things that I want you to learn to declare, that I want you to learn to preach over every single aspect of your life whenever something comes up. Number one, I am fully forgiven and free from all shame and condemnation. Number two, I act in audacious faith to change the world. Number three, I have no fear or anxiety. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. Man, if you're struggling with fear and anxiety, read those scriptures. Declare that whenever that fear creeps in, whenever that anxiety creeps in. And what you're going to see is that God's going to start to do something there. You're going to encounter Satan's lies with the word of God, and your faith is going to rise up. Number four, I am able to fulfill the calling God has placed on my life. Number five, I have no insecurity because I see myself the way God sees me. Number six, I'm a faithful spouse and a godly parent. If you are single and you want those things, you can add future in there. Number seven, I'm completely whole, physically, mentally, emotionally. Number eight, I am enabled to walk in the sacrificial love of Christ. 
9, I have the wisdom of the Lord concerning every decision I make. Number 10, I am protected from all harm and evil in Jesus' name. Man, how much in your life would change if whenever Satan comes into your life with a lie, you counter it with what God's promises say, you counter it with what God's word says. That's gonna build your faith. And as those little things start to build your faith, you're gonna begin to have that audacious faith, that, that faith that asks God for the impossible. Let's be a church that has bold faith, that doesn't just leave our prayers at, God be with me today, but we would have the, the faith to see the sun stand still, that, that we would be a church where, where the, like I said, the best sermon you're hearing during the week is the sermon that you're preaching to yourself straight out of scripture, reminding yourself of what God's word says for that moment that Satan's giving you a lie. But notice this, before you start celebrating that, man, God's gonna do the impossible. God's gonna clear out my debt. God's gonna heal me right now. God's gonna bring my son back. God's gonna do this. Before you start celebrating that, I want you to notice what happens here in Joshua. Notice this, Joshua still has to fight the battle. He still has to fight. I think lots of times we pray, God, get me out of this battle. And God's saying, I wanna get you through the battle. He, he still has to go and he has to, he, he, he fights this fight. Joshua wasn't just willing to pray, sun stand still. What we see in scripture is Joshua was willing to march all night to see that happen. So I wanna ask you, will you pray bold prayers that says sun stand still and will you march all night to see it happen? Will you go to battle? Will, will, will you do what God's calling you to do? Because if you're gonna pray sun stand still, you better be ready to march. You better be ready to go to battle. And we don't, we don't go to battle, we don't do march all night because we need to earn God's love. You could never earn God's love, right? But what I want you to see is that God takes our faith and he takes our works and those together, then he ins supernaturally inserts his grace into our situation. It, it takes faith and it, and it takes works. I thought of this, it's possible for us to come into church week in and week out, take notes, to have those audacious declarations, for us to memorize scripture, for us to preach to ourselves, but never see that miracle happen. To, to never walk in true audacious faith. Why? Because it's not faith until we actually do it. It takes us stepping out and doing it, praying that prayer, marching. What is that thing that you need God to do in your life? If you bow your head, Close your eyes. I, I've been asking you that question all morning. And that thing should be on your mind, that, that, that seemingly impossible thing. But I know that there's some here this morning who you have not yet given your life to Jesus. You have yet to, to surrender your life to him, to, to give him your mistakes so we can turn it into a miracle. And there is no greater need, there is no greater time to, to have a miracle happen than for God to, to save us from death to life, to be forgiven of our sins, to have new life, a new heart, a new hope, a new future, a new relationship with God. And in order to see sun stand still, we have to surrender our life to Jesus so that he can begin to work through us. And if that's you this morning, and today you wanna give your life to Jesus, saying, I, I surrender to him, he can have my life, I wanna live for him. If that's you, would you just raise your hand saying, that's me, I give my life to Jesus. See your hands. It's the best decision that you could ever make. The other group I wanna ask is this morning, you would say, there's a sun standstill thing in my life that, that I need God to do a miracle on. If that's you and you, you need a miracle in your life. Whatever it may be, would you just raise your hand saying, that's me. I see your hands. So here's how we're gonna close today. I'm gonna pray over you, and I left a little bit of time here, and we're just gonna spend some time praying, asking God for these miracles. I, wanna, I want you to notice something in Joshua. Lots of times when we need prayer for something, 
we come forward and, and we want other people to pray for us, which is great, right? We're a church and we're gonna support you and we wanna pray with you. But notice Joshua didn't go to everyone and say, hey, can you pray for me that the sun would stand still? You know why? Because you have access to God right there in your seat. You have access to God in your car, in your house, and you can pray those bold prayers over your life. And I wanna challenge you to do that this morning. So I'm gonna pray, and I want to challenge you just to spend some time in prayer, praying for those big things, and spend some time in worship, and just asking God to see a miracle. Jesus, I thank you that you came from heaven to earth to save us, not just so we can survive, but so we can change the world for you, God. I pray for those here this morning that need a miracle, those here this morning who who need to see something big happen like what happened for Joshua. I pray that we would have faith like Joshua, this audacious faith, this faith that asks for the sun to stand still, that asks for the impossible to happen. I pray for those here that are in need of physical healing, those who are sick with cancer, those who are sick with whatever it may be, God, that, that we would come before you and we would boldly ask for a healing. I pray for those here who who their marriage is struggling, that we would come before you and boldly ask for something big to happen there. God, I pray that you would give us audacious faith. I pray that you would give us little things throughout our day that, that will build our faith so that we come ready to see you do something big. Have your way in this room, God. Speak to us. Amen. God, I pray for those with physical healing that you would heal their body from head to toe, God that you would do what only you can do for those with emotional, those who are struggling with anxiety, depression, different things that are going on. God, I pray that you would be our healer, that you would be our miracle worker. For those who have family members who are struggling with things, addictions, those who have kids who have run out from you, God, I pray that you would put someone in their path to show them your love, to show them that, that you are for them, not against them. God, I pray that this church would be a church that would rise up that would be bold in our faith, that would be bold to ask you for big things, that we would see big things happen, that we'd see miracles happen in the workplace, in the schools. God, that we would see revival take place. God, our world needs something, and I pray that we would present the answer, Jesus, and that we would be bold with that. I pray that faith would rise up, and that we would learn that we can trust in you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Let's be a church that is bold this week in our faith. Let's be a church that's bold, waiting, and excited to see the miracles that God has for us. We love you. We hope you have a blessed day. We'll see you guys tonight at 6.